Tristan Casas showed off his power at the plate over the weekend as he homered in back-to-back -back games to help lead the Red Sox to a series win over the Angels. You are Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Gabby Hurlba, former ESPN social media associate and currently the host of the Boston Balling podcast as well, and also known to some as Red Sox enthusiast, which is why I am here to bring you the latest in all things Boston Red Sox. Monday through Friday, straight to your favorite podcast feed. And you haven't even heard the best part yet. It's free. If it's free, why not take the opportunity? Might as well start your day off the right way by tuning in to Locked On Red Sox, part of Locked On, which is your team every day. From brakes to exhaust kits and beyond, eBay Motors has over 122 million parts to keep your ride or die alive. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to bring home that big win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Welcome to another episode of the show where the Boston Red Sox are coming off of their second series win against the Angels of this season. This team seems to like playing against them. And lots of good things to be of note from this series, including Masataka Yoshida crushing his first home run of the season on Sunday when the Red Sox won 5-4. to four. And that was really nice to see because he's been struggling at the plate, really struggling to see the ball and make the type of contact that he wants. He was generating a ton of weak ground balls, recording outs, and not really being the Masataka Yoshida that people want him to be. So he crushed his first home run of the season on Sunday. And it was nice to see because he definitely needed a confidence boost. And I'm hoping that him going deep now allowed for him to be able to develop some confidence that he might have needed moving forward. And the thing with Yoshida is there's a lot of expectations on him because the Red Sox signed him to a pretty big contract when he got here. So people know that there's pressure on him to perform, and you never really know with a player coming over from the Japanese league if his skills are going to be able to translate in the majors or not. And last year, he started off very strong. His first half of the year was really good at the plate, having all-star caliber stuff that he was bringing on a daily basis, to then slipping a little bit in the second half. After the all-star break, he really did start to struggle offensively, and people were saying, is this really the Yoshida that we're going to see moving forward? Can he make contact with the off-speed pitches, or does he really rely on just the fastball? And when he crushed the home run, he ripped an off-speed pitch that was a little high, and he was able to adjust and get it out of the park. And that's what we like to see from him. Hopefully, it leads to good things for him moving forward. And also, Tyler O'Neill, I mean, just continues to make history for the Boston Red Sox. He now has the most home runs ever with seven through a player's first 14 games with the franchise. He's so good. He crushed that seventh home run on Sunday in the Red Sox big win. Now, for O'Neal, he came in here hoping to stay healthy because for him, health was the biggest thing and can he stay on the field? Because we've seen in past years him not be able to stay healthy for the majority of the season. And I was like, he's going to be able to bring very good defense here. His offense should be able to keep up because his bat is great for Fenway. But can he stay healthy and stay on the field all year long? And so far, he certainly has done exactly that. He went two for three and the Red Sox went on Sunday with that home run, an RBI, and a run scored. He's hitting third in the order right now because of the Rafael Devers injury. 
And I'm hoping Devers can come back soon because Bobby Dahlbeck having to be in there and play third is definitely tough. But hitting that seventh home run was history made for the Red Sox. And he's fun to watch. He's definitely showing a lot of power. When he was acquired this offseason, it was so he could be a presence in the middle of the order. And so far, he truly has done that. Given that the team is also down Trevor Story now for the season, they'll need Tyler O'Neill to continue to be that presence that he's been. He's hitting 304 this season with a 1.209 OPS. It's working out well so far with this deal, so hopefully he can continue to do what he's doing and make waves in this Boston Red Sox lineup. Another player that's worth noting, though, from this weekend series is Tristan Casas. I mean, this kid showed off his power. He actually hit a home run on back-to-back days. On Saturday, the Red Sox won 7-2, to and it was fueled by his two-run home run that scored Yoshida. So essentially, Abreu set up a four-run inning for the Red Sox because He crushed a double that could have been a single, but he turned it into two bases. So because he got himself into scoring position, it then led to Yoshida hitting a single on the next at bat and scoring him. And then Tristan Casas comes in and crushes a 429-foot mammoth home run to score Masataka Yoshida. And then later in the inning, Rafaela reached on an infield single to shortstop, which scored Emmanuel Valdez after he doubled in the same inning. So the Red Sox started off really strong on Saturday with a four-run first inning, and they never really looked back. They grabbed the victory 7-2, to two, and it was nice to see because the previous day, the Red Sox did absolutely nothing offensively. They lost 7 to nothing. It was a pretty pathetic showing in all facets for the Red Sox. Lots of defensive miscues that caused the Angels to score some runs, and the Red Sox only had three hits total in the game. So it was definitely not ideal for Boston, and the defense was something that they seriously needed to clean up because it's not good when the Red Sox are consistently giving up runs because of their bad defense. And I feel badly for the pitchers because it's really not as much on them. For example, in that 7 to nothing loss, Tanner Houck got the start, and he went 5.2 innings, giving up 12 hits, seven runs, but only four of those runs were earned. The other three were unearned runs because the Red Sox just had too many defensive errors. And if a pitcher can't rely on the guys around them to help them get out of innings, then that's just not a great look for the Red Sox as a whole. David Hamilton made a lot of miscues at shortstop, and Manuel Valdez made some miscues at second base. Bobby Dahlbeck playing third in general is tough, but once Devers comes back, hopefully that's fixed. And a couple mistakes in the outfield. When they bobble balls in the outfield, it doesn't work out well for the Red Sox and usually ends up causing either a run to score or the runners to advance to the next base, which sets them up better to score on the next at-bat. So lots of the Red Sox had to clean up on Friday. But Saturday and Sunday, the defense was certainly a lot better for Boston. No errors in Saturday's 7-2 win and no errors in Sunday's 5-4 win. And it goes to show how much good defense can make a difference in a team's success overall. So the lack of defensive miscues were huge for Boston. And Casas being able to show off that power and hit a home run two days in a row really helped give the Red Sox the energy that they needed to win those two games. He's taken 58 at-bats this year, recorded 15 hits and four home runs, and is batting to a 259 batting average. He's also scored 10 runs and driven in eight runs. His on-base percentage is 358, and his slugging is 500. His OPS is also 858. So he's starting to wake up a little bit more at the plate. He started off slow, but has able has been able to find his groove out there offensively. So I'm really hoping that Casas can continue to impress at the plate and be able to continue this streak that he's on of crushing baseballs, just really getting a good handle on them and finding ways to drive in more runs because that's something Tristan Casas did so well of last year in his first full season with the team 
was he was driving in runs at a pretty frequent rate. So I'm hoping that he can get back to that. And I'm hoping having hit a big home run in two straight games gives him the confidence he needs moving forward to help exactly with that. And I'm a big fan of Casas. I think there's a ton of potential there. He definitely has showcased that potential and put it on full display already. So we know he has it in him, just waiting for him to continue to apply himself and just have big games for Boston because that's definitely what he's known for. And him continuing to play first base regularly, be the primary first baseman, hopefully that alone is giving him the confidence he needs. So big couple days from Casas, and I expect to see more moving forward. Coming up, I'm going to be talking about another player who struggled to start the season but might be finding his swing now. So that could be huge for Boston if he continues to hit the way that he did in the last couple of games of this series. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. I can speak from personal experience as somebody who really doesn't know much about cars and say that eBay Motors has really helped me out a lot. So that can be you too as well if you head to eBay Motors today. We've all been there, either as a player or a fan. It's halftime and the scoreboard is not looking good. You're feeling low, not sure you or your team can pull out a win. That's when you dig deep, lift your head up, and say to yourself, time to get back in the game, pull off some bank heists, and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. That's right, the smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go lets you compete with your friends to get the most riches in the biggest empire. It's the Monopoly you love, but on your phone anytime, with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies. There's so much to do. Play on countless dynamic Monopoly boards. Make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball. Charge other players rent for your iconic properties. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chests and in tournaments to get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. So get back out there, put on your game face, and download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store or Google Play. So much fun to have these fun online games, so you definitely should download Monopoly Go today. It's Locked On's NFL Mock Draft, live on April 17th at 7 o'clock Eastern Time, streaming on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Find the ultimate six-episode series on April 17th at 7 o'clock ET to hear who the local Locked On experts are picking for every NFL franchise, with live reactions from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle. The Locked On NFL Mock Draft on April 17th at 7 ET, streaming live on Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It will be a great time and you absolutely won't want to miss it. So be sure to mark your calendars in a couple days and check that out as well. Willier Abreu really has struggled to start the season for the Boston Red Sox. He had a tough spring training. We really were hoping for more from him during the spring to get confidence that he would hit well during the season, and that didn't exactly happen. He struck out 26 times in 77 plate appearances during the Grapefruit League, which resulted in sporadic playing time to start the season. His unpleasant spring 
carried over as he was two for 18 with nine strikeouts to begin the season, but he's put together consecutive games that suggest he might be finding a groove. He's four for seven with two doubles, two RBIs, and two runs scored over the last two contests for the Boston Red Sox. And he definitely was a standout for the team. On Saturday when the Red Sox won seven to two, he was a big part of that win. He went two for four that day and recorded one RBI. He did strike out twice, but he was able to get his bat moving and looked really confident out there. He did drive in a run on an RBI single, and it was nice to see because a lot of people, I think, have been waiting for him to get going at the plate, and it's been tough watching him try to find that swing, and he's been super unsuccessful with lots of strikeouts and just really not seeing the ball well. In Sunday's game, he just came in to pinch hit. He did go 0 for 1, but he took a walk. And that was at least promising to show that he's finding his groove and being disciplined because the Red Sox did take a lot of walks in Sunday's contest. A couple of those walks did come around to score later on in the game. So even though he didn't get a hit, I mean, he didn't really get the opportunity to do a whole lot because he wasn't originally in the lineup. He just came in to pinch it for Bobby Dahlbeck. And the fact that he took a walk is a big step up for him because Earlier on in the season, it was a lot more swings and misses. So if he can generate more patience at the plate moving forward and be willing to take his walks and be willing to look for other opportunities to make those big plays and make an impact both offensively and defensively, then people are going to go back to starting to think that Abreu has what it takes. Because honestly, we knew it was a small sample size last year. He went into the season in September getting called up, and the Red Sox knew that they only would see a month of him. So it was hard to really know what type of player he was going to be. So going into spring training, there was a lot that he needed to do to prove himself, to show that he could be on that next level and be a good fit for the Red Sox outfield moving forward. So you have an outfield situation where Sadam Rafaela has had a really nice start to the season. He's played a little bit in the infield as well due to injuries and having to shuffle some people around. But he is a good outfielder, so he's been primarily getting a lot of playing time in the outfield, along with Jaron Duran and Tyler O'Neill, both of whom have showed lots of capabilities of having a big season this year. Jaron Duran, I really like hitting leadoff. It makes sense to put him there with his speed because if he can make contact and get on base, then he can turn singles into doubles a lot. So I really like the idea of him hitting in the leadoff spot. And then Tyler O'Neill, who obviously has showcased a ton of power and put it on full display with his home runs that he's hitting for the Boston Red Sox. He's warming up very nicely to Fenway. So he's gotten consistent playing time in the outfield as well. So that did kind of leave Abreu as that odd man out who had the pressure on him to show that he could compete with the rest of those guys and be a key piece for the Boston Red Sox moving forward. So the fact that he had a big game Saturday and took a walk on Sunday showed to me that he's starting to gain more confidence at the plate and starting to find his footing. Because a lot of times teams do have players that are rusty to start the season and they need to ease their way into being the type of player that they're going to be at the plate. Because if you go from the offseason where you're not really seeing live pitching to then going into spring training and seeing live pitching, but it might not be the same pitching as you see in the majors, to then starting the season, there is a bit of a transition period there. And with William Abreu, I was really looking for, okay, what type of hitter is he? Is he the hitter that we saw in September of last year that was crushing baseballs, making a big impact, and was getting himself on base quite a bit? Or is it the Willier Abreu we saw during spring training that has struggled a lot, can't really see the ball well, and is swinging and missing a lot? It's hard to really know for sure still because it is still April. The Red Sox haven't played very many games yet. But what I can say is that was very promising stuff from him, especially on Saturday and the impact that he was making in a variety of different ways. He's not just relying on hitting the home run like some hitters do. He can 
hit the ball to various parts of the ballpark and he was making his presence known. And that's what this outfield group of Red Sox players needs to do is make an impression when they're out there, out there, or else they will be the first one to go when Ref Snyder comes back and the Red Sox need to make room for him on the roster because Ref Snyder is good to have because he's a great utility player as well. So I feel like the Red Sox will want him to have the playing time when he comes back. So Willier Abreu could be the one the Red Sox either send back down to AAA or possibly just DFA if they don't feel like there's a spot for him on the team. So this is crunch time for Abreu and I'm hoping he's able to figure things out and he use his big game on Saturday in order to fuel his potential moving forward and get him back into form of the player that we did see last September because that player would be a huge difference maker offensively for this Boston Red Sox team and imagine if their outfield was just in so much better shape because everybody in the outfield was hitting well Abreu included then you're looking at a really talented group of outfielders who are going to continue to hit and make the Red Sox offense a problem for opposing pitchers. So hopefully Abreu can take this confidence into the next game, but he was certainly one of the biggest storylines for Boston on Saturday and even into Sunday when he continued to just show good plate discipline on Sunday. That's what it's about, showing good plate discipline, knowing when to swing and when not to swing, and trusting yourself and your ability level to know I can do this and I can hit this ball hard and find a way to advance the base runner. So good for William Abreu. It was nice to see him get off his feet a little bit and find a way to get himself a couple hits because it was tough to watch him prior to that and he was really struggling. So hopefully this fuels something special for him moving forward. Coming up, I'm going to be talking about a pitcher who made a start for the Boston Red Sox over the weekend and was in conversation before the season started to be a starter, but he ended up starting in AAA, and he looked good in his start. So that's coming up next. Wouldn't it be great if you could see all your investment and retirement accounts in one place? I've been using Yahoo Finance, our sponsor today, and it's an absolute game changer. With Yahoo Finance, you can consolidate your views from multiple accounts into one hub and access the expert analysis you need to tend to your entire portfolio with confidence. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com, the number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. That's yahoofinance.com. Head to Yahoo Finance today and let them seriously change your life for the best. Lockdown has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Lockdown Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Lockdown, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Lockdown Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. It's really great for Locked On because nobody else has this. We are the only network with a 24-7 sports streaming channel. So you can stay caught up in everything going on in sports no matter where you are. So subscribe to Locked On Sports today. As the Boston Red Sox look ahead to a four-game series against the Cleveland Guardians starting today on Marathon Monday. Happy Marathon Monday, by the way, to all of you in the Boston area. The Red Sox do have their yearly early game for Patriots Day. Hopefully the Red Sox can start the series off strong with a win against Cleveland. And we'll see how the pitching holds up in the series because the Red Sox starting pitchers still remain with the lowest ERA in baseball right now. It seems a little more lopsided than that, but it's really because their defense has cost them a lot of runs. And when you look in the grand scheme of things at how many runs the starting pitchers were responsible for, it really wasn't that many. And I'm hoping that trend continues. Cooper Criswell certainly continued it on Saturday in the Red Sox 7-2 win over the Angels. He pitched four innings, giving up five hits and two earned runs. He also walked one batter and struck out four. It was nice to see him have a good start. He... 
got called up from AAA after Nick Pavetta was sent to the injured list. And they're thinking it's a temporary thing and that Pavetta should be back soon. But in the interim, Cooper Criswell got the nod and came in and started on Saturday and looked good. And the Red Sox needed a good start from him. I was hoping they would have him go through five innings, but he did only pitch four. I think they didn't want to stretch him out too much because he isn't quite used to that yet. So I bet the Red Sox, maybe in his next start, allow him to pitch a little bit deeper into the game. But he did do what he needed to do for four innings. He pitched to the tune of a 450 ERA only in that one game that he's pitched so far. So a very small sample size so far with him. But if this small sample size and what we saw on Saturday is any indication of what's to come with him, that's great. He had a really nice variety of pitches that he was using to keep the opposing hitters on their toes. And one thing I like about this Red Sox starting rotation as a whole is they seem like there's more rhyme and reason to what pitches they're using when. One thing I noticed last year was that the Red Sox didn't really have a legitimate strategy towards figuring out what pitches to throw. It was more whatever they felt confident in at the time they would throw. And that strategy didn't always work. It got the Red Sox starters out of games earlier because they became very predictable with opposing hitters, and there wasn't really as much of a rhyme or reason to what they were doing. Andrew Bailey runs a system that, to me, seems very cohesive. Every starter is on the same page. He's working to their strengths and having them utilize their best pitches the most and then growing the rest of their outing with pitches that they also have up their sleeve that are good that can help throw off hitters and change up what they're throwing. So I really like the way Andrew Bailey is elevating and focusing on the individual strengths of each starter in this rotation. That's going to pay dividends for the team later on. And it was really nice to see Cooper Criswell go out there and shove for the four innings that he was out there. And I'm hoping that definitely continues for him because the Red Sox definitely could absolutely use more good starts from him. And who knows how many more starts he's going to make. When Pavetta does come back, he's presumably going to go back down to AAA and be able to showcase his stuff there. But it's nice that he's getting his feet wet and getting that big league exposure, showing people what potential he does have. Greg Weissert came into the inning after that and pitched two innings, giving up one hit and no earned runs and striking out three. He's been very good overall for this team so far, too since the start of the season coming out of the bullpen. So he's definitely been reliable. And then Josh Winkowski pitched two innings, giving up zero earned runs, striking out two. And Joely Rodriguez finished it off, pitching one inning, giving up two hits, no earned runs, and also recording a strikeout. So the bullpen did their job as well, gave up no runs after Chris Well gave up the two that he did. So overall, good pitching by the Red Sox on Saturday, and they cleaned up a lot of the defensive mishaps, and it made for a really nice afternoon and a good win all around for Boston. And the Red Sox needed that because it was their first win of the season at home. They had lost their first four games at home, and that could be very, very deterring to a team's overall morale because if you come home after a nice road trip where the vibes were high and then you drop four straight games, it definitely is hard from a morale standpoint after that to rally the team to continue to do what they're doing and continue to hone in on their strengths and play with confidence and play with promise. And the Red Sox definitely looked like they played with promise on Saturday and also on Sunday. And Cooper Criswell, I definitely want to see more from him, see him continue to utilize multiple pitches, especially those off-speed ones, and be able to fool him. Hitters. And I liked the immediate confidence that he showed because it could be scary when you're making your first start of the season for a team that you haven't played with before. And the environment at Fenway is one unlike any other. Fans are very hungry for wins and they're very into the game. So not everybody can handle that environment. I feel like Bobby Dahlbeck is somebody who's showing that he can't handle that environment. So I wish the Red Sox would just trade him and allow him the opportunity to succeed elsewhere, except his value is not super high right now because he isn't playing that well. So they might be stuck with him, but I do think for his own sake, he deserves a different opportunity, deserves to have a chance to be used a lot when it comes to playing time and be able to showcase what he can do. So Cooper Criswell is somebody who maybe can handle the Fenway environment because he didn't seem super rattled 
in the game. He was super in control the whole time during his start. He had the command to be able to succeed for sure. And then when the Red Sox pulled him after four innings, it was hard to look back on it and not say that was a good start from Quiswell. We really could not have asked for much more. So good start by him. I'm hoping to see him continue to utilize that confidence moving forward and pitch with a sense of urgency and a sense of I want to succeed here. It was great to see, and I'm really happy to see that he was able to positively contribute because these starting pitchers need to pitch well, and I am hoping that he helps prove – people wrong and helps with the narrative of the Red Sox starting pitching is going to be very bad this year so far they have not been and that's just another start that made us feel confident in what the Red Sox are doing so hopefully moving forward they can continue to not have as many defensive mishaps I'm hoping David Hamilton can grow at shortstop the more time he spends there because now with story out for the season the Red Sox might end up utilizing him for the majority of the season moving forward. Vaughn Grisham is expected back soon. He's in the middle of his rehab assignments right now. He likely will play second base when he comes back because that's the position the Red Sox originally intended for him to play. So him playing second base and then continuing the platoon at shortstop seems to be what they would want to do right now. But they could give Grisham some reps at shortstop too if they feel like defensively it would be better than what they have out there now. So we'll see. Grisham... Should be back very soon. I'm excited to see what he has as well when he comes back. He was a very highly regarded prospect in the Braves system. There's just so much talent over there. So when he comes back, hopefully the infield will be cleaned up a little bit in terms of defense. But I'm hoping David Hamilton and Emmanuel Valdez can figure out defensively how to make the right plays to put this team in a place to succeed and back up the pitchers in the best way that they can. Go Red Sox. Lots to be excited about as we head into the Marathon Monday game very soon and the start of another new week for the Boston Red Sox. So will they win the series? Time will tell. Let's hope so. Let's at least hope for a split in the four-game series. So as always, go Red Sox. Keep the faith, and I will catch you on the flip side.